Good evening. Uh, I'll just fill you in real quick on our background as a family. I'm not going to spend much time on it. Pastor J.D. made real clear where to get on here, speak up, and then shut up. So I intend to do that. Uh, when we came, uh, our both Carol's spouse and my spouse had died of cancer, and we came together. We've been together since then, 49 years, so I guess it lasted. But, but we, uh, we both understood a lot because we both had lost a spouse in a very similar manner, and we went to the same church. It's amazing how God works things out, things you don't ever think are going to happen. But uh, tonight, I want to just talk with you very briefly about what it's been like here. We came, and Pastor Willette had been here a little over a year when we came, and I said that as long as this church was teaching the Word of God faithfully, I'd be here. When it quit, I'd be out of here. And all these years later, praise the Lord, it's still happening. So it, that's what makes all the difference in the world. Now I want to just read a little bit from Scripture to you, and then we'll kick it around and talk about it. It said, ye are our, ep I'm sorry, I should tell you where it's found first. You don't need to look it up because I'm going to be shooting quite quick. But it's in 2 Corinthians 2 and 3. And it says, ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but on fleshy tables of the heart. Now, I'm aware that that was a complimentary uh, passage in Scripture because they had been faithful. They were doing what was right. But I would submit to you that as parents, we need to pay a lot of attention to it. Sometimes we as parents live in a manner that doesn't back up what we talk with our kids. And if we expect them to respect God's word, to respect living for him, then we sure ought to wake up and do it the right way. And I want to tell you that I haven't always done that way. I've done some really stupid things in my life. And I have asked God's forgiveness, and I've asked our kids' forgiveness. But it's amazing how God takes care of those things. Proverbs 20 and verse 11 says, Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. Even a kid is known by that. So as dads, we should be able to be known by that. I gave my kids... Quite early on, after Carol and I were married, one of the worst examples a parent could give, and I've never forgotten it. I was so humiliated afterwards. I had to apologize to all the kids, apologize to Carol. We were on our way home from church one Sunday, and we were on the expressway, and for some reason, a guy was a real wacko. He drove off on the shoulder of the road and then tried to cut back in as I got there. And he just kept pushing and pushing, and I had a bad temper back then. Pretty soon I'd had enough of it. I got out of my car and suggested that he and I might have a chat together. <laughs> and he chose not to, lucky for me. <laughs> but, you know, we were on our way home from church when I did it. One of the worst examples that a man could give his kids one of the very possible worst. And I had to go home and I had to ask all of them for forgiveness. Most of all, I had to ask God for forgiveness. And I've never forgotten it because it was so beyond belief that I could do something that stupid. But the scripture says we're, we're read by all men. He was using it in a commending background and thanking them for how they had stood up. I did the opposite. You know, sometimes 
Our kids can't hear us because our conduct is so loud that they can't hear the words. And I pray that God would not let that happen to you. Learn from a stupid guy like me that something like that should never happen. And <clears throat> there are many other things that scripture has said. And another one right along that same line in Ephesians 6, he said, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Dads, do we provoke our kids? I think we do. Because here again, we don't, we're not conducting ourselves the way we ought. And I, I, as I said, learn from my mistakes. Another thing that scripture tells us, he said, in these <clears throat> words which I command you this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and thou, and thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. He said, if you're going to point the way, you got to show them through God's word. There, there is no other way. And he said, you need to be diligent about that. Now, there are many ways that we can be diligent at. Some we did well at, some we didn't do so well at. One thing we did well at, we had daily devotions with the kids. And they grew up hearing God's word and they were growing up praying. And uh, it is a help. We need to do that. I believe as I search through the scripture that there's a lot more that we could be doing even than that. He, he said, you talk them when thou sittest and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down. Just family devotions isn't enough. He says, make it an integral part of your life. And he expects us to do that. Why wouldn't we want to be that? Why wouldn't we? We know that in and of ourselves, we are nothing. And we're not going to be strong enough to do it unless we get God's word deep within us. And hopefully we can pass that on to our kids. And then with one last passage that I'll talk about, he, God said in Isaiah 55, for your thoughts are not my thoughts. Hmm, neither are your ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God obviously is in a category only unto himself. How could I ever expect to measure up to his thoughts? No, but I can work at it. I can work at seeing what God has said to us, paying attention to it. <clears throat> and then as that takes place in us, the amazing part is that his thoughts do become our thoughts because we have worked in integrating it into our lives and asking him to make it his thoughts in my mind. And I thank, I thank him for it. And I thank you for the time. All right, stand with me again as we sing that second verse of O Come All Ye Faithful.
didn't even introduce me or anything, so I, I wasn't I wasn't prepared yet. I gotta get everything out here. I got 15 things in my pocket. Here we go. Okay. I have to say hi to my kids because I said I would. So, hi Taylor. Hi Tanner. They were going to bring a sign and have my name on it so they could wave. <laughs> so I said this isn't a sports game. But they also think I play with LeBron James, so I don't uh, You got a lot to learn. Um, first, I just want to thank the church family here because um, I owe my almost my entire life to this church because I was not born here, but I was born and then brought here. And all of you guys were very instrumental in my life, and I want to thank you very much for that. And I wasn't supposed to get emotional until my dad talks. But um, tonight I just want to do a simple, th a simple thought, and growing up, obviously you're taught by your parents, and my dad had a specific thing he would tell us, and he would, if any of you know him, he likes to give life lessons. And it ranged from funny things, uh, to more serious, more spiritual things. And most of the time, they were just a quick thought. Uh, maybe something happened, and it was just a, bit, a little bit of an advice. And one of those things that always stuck with me, and I mentioned this to my brother, and he said, yep, that's for sure. My dad would say, be different. He would say, Zach, be different. And what did he mean like by that? Well, when I was younger, usually it was I was being lazy doing something, he say, Zach, be different. Do your best. As I got older, it was a little more serious. Maybe I was going to college, and before he left, he said, Zach, be different. And he wanted me to be a good testimony. And that stuck with me, and it still does to this day. And it's very convicting because God wants us to be different. And, yes, we're all Christians. So, obviously, we're different from the world. But... Do we act like it? Because a lot of times I don't. A couple verses that came to mind was Colossians 3.23. And these we all learned when we were young. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Another one, Ecclesiastes 9.10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. And looking back at my grandpa and then also my dad, they were different, and they were great examples. And I know my grandpa brought up things that he didn't do well, but the majority of the time, him and my dad were great testimonies. Um, with my dad, raising me and my brother and my sister, he was different. He did his best. He didn't want to be an average dad. He wanted to be the best dad he could be. And we saw that, how my grandpa and my dad treat their wives. It's something that I like to emulate because they treat their wives with the utmost respect. How they give time and energy to the church. I mean, everyone knows who they are, and they, they see them doing things. And when you see somebody doing that, and it's your own family, it's easy then to come along behind them and help out, because it's just second nature. And I really appreciate that. But they were different. They tried to do their best. Because... We have somebody that the world doesn't have. We have Jesus Christ, and we have the Holy Spirit, and it matters. This is something that I work on, and I continue to work on. Obviously, we don't always do what we're supposed to, but Lord Jesus helps us, and good thing he forgives us, because this is something um, that I struggle with, and I'll continue to try to work on. So I just want to give two quick things um, that the Lord's convicted me about. Um, the first one is... Am I different to the outside world? Now, the majority of us have professional lives. And we don't work with Christians. But do they know that we're Christians? Do my coworkers know where I go to church? Do they know that I sing in church? Because I think God wants us to be different in the world. And not just know that, they're, that I'm a Christian, but do I act like it in my professional life? Simple things. Do I show up on time? 
because God wants, to be, wants us to be and wants me to be the best employee I can be. And if I show up late, how can I then ever be a testimony? And it's those simple things. Do I give my best effort when I'm given something to do? You know, growing up as a kid, you're told every day, do your best, try your hardest, try to get the best grade you can, do the best you can do in your sports team. And then when you're an adult, sometimes I forget that because no one's telling me that anymore. And do I just do my best in my job? And most of us have those. Um, another thing with the outside world, and it, it came to mind the other day, when actually Pastor Howell was preaching on Sunday night, um, Joseph in the Old Testament. You know, he was a slave, but I think he did his best. And he was the best slave he could be because he wouldn't have been promoted. What if he woke up and was just an average slave and didn't really care? I don't know if the Lord would have used him the way he did. And that wasn't necessarily working and helping for God. I mean, it was ultimately, but Joseph not necessarily didn't know that at that time. He was taking orders from an unsaved person. The other uh, area, and obviously all of us have families. That's how we got here, right? And am I a different dad? Am I a different parent? Because now I have two kids, and yeah, we have the four generations. But I had a great parents. Do I do the same thing with my kids? Am I different? Do I try not to be an average parent? Do I try to be the exceptional parent? With God's help. Because most of the time we know, or I know how to be the best parent. It's not hard. But through the mundane things of life, sometimes I, I don't think about it. Or I don't put forth the effort that I should be. Uh, one of the things that I did, and I was, um, my wife helped me uh, be convicted on this, was um, when I got home from work, um, I wanted to just look at my phone or just zone into something. And if any of you know me at all, I zone in, and when I'm zoned into something, there's no way you're getting me out of that tunnel. Um, maybe it's a guy thing, I don't know, but I'm, Hannah could say my name five times, and I didn't hear it once. I didn't ignore it, I just didn't hear it. So, But it was convicting, because it, she would say, Zach, why don't you spend time with the kids when you get home, because they want to see you. And it's just my phone. Who cares what I'm doing on it? It's just a stupid phone. So I go home, put the phone on the counter until a little bit after dinner when we settled for tonight, for the night. That was something little that the Lord helped me do that made me a better dad. Also with the kids, listen to them. And listen to them when they're four, but also listen to them when they're 24. Good night. Um... Uh, my parents still listen to me and I'm 28 years old and I appreciate it because not all kids have parents like I do so communicate to your kids even when they're out of the house um, I'm also genetically um, with my father so this is where I'm, this is coming from <laughs> uh the last thing, and I'll, and I'll be done here, is be a different husband or spouse. Spend time talking and communicating with them. I saw this, like I said earlier, um, with how they treat their wives. Um, not everyone sees that, obviously, because they're not at home with us, but the same way they treat them, their wives here at church is identical to what they do at home. And it was never different. Usually it's more because of here's more of a professional setting, but talk to them, communicate to them, because that's being the best husband I can be. And like I said at the beginning, God cares if we do our best, and he cares if we're trying our hardest, because we're Christians, and we have the Holy Spirit, so shouldn't we be better husbands than a worldly person? Or shouldn't I be a better parent? And then the last thing, and this is just encouragement, uh, spoil them um, and it may be not for everyone that's totally different for me and Hannah I know how to spoil Hannah get her Chinese right 
But for everyone, that's totally different. And I encourage you to spoil them. Spoil your kids. Because, like this year has shown us, we've got one life. And God cares how we treat our family and everybody, really. But love them, spoil them. Because you only get one chance. Uh, I apologize for getting emotional. But... God cares how we set and how we account, how we do and act and accomplish things in our professional lives and at home. God cares just as much what we do from Monday to Friday as he does what we do on Sunday. So I hope that's encouragement to you, and I hope you all have a great night and a great 2021. Stand with me one more time as we sing that third verse of O Come All You Faithful. Now, my dad told that story on the expressway. I don't remember that, but it did remind me of some things that he didn't apologize for. <laughs> and so I'd like to go over that list, and he could, he could come up and apologize for all the things that I remember that he did. Oh. Um, Psalms 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. And... That's Wayne. Now, don't think, if I say Wayne or dad, it's the same person, okay? Um, it's not disrespectful, it's just so it, it's a little confusing for some people. But I met him 50 years ago, and um, he wasn't my dad at the time. My mom and dad got married, he mentioned. And um, the thing is, when I think of dad, his ways his steps were and it's neat because i looked this up a little bit it's the voice of god just whispering this is the way follow it and it always just was a whisper god just whispers to us we're so cluttered in our minds that we take don't take the time to listen i think sometimes um but they did and um boy there's so many things i learned growing up at home i mean some were good things my sister Jamie is here, so she can attest not all were good things, but we try to forget those. One of the very first things I learned when they got married was the word no. My dad that passed away, Ed, and really thought I was the center of the universe. Wayne didn't think any of us six kids were the center of the universe. <clears throat> and so he introduced me to that word, and... I wasn't really bright, but I made notes that, okay, I remember being in the grocery store or somewhere, and I asked him for something. Dad, can I get this? No. Well, with my dad, when he was alive, that meant maybe. And I begged. So I went back and asked Dad, can I have this? And I, I can still see it. He turned around and said, I told you no once. You don't ask again. That's a different thing than my dad, so. <laughs> but, you know, and as Zach mentioned it, one of, the, one of the neat things, and you know how you, you remember growing up and some of the things, and we'll laugh about them, and my mom will be like, that never happened. You guys are, you're changing how that event happened. And sometimes we'll do that. But this stuck in my mind, and I checked, I fact-checked it with my brother, but in 50 years, I've never heard my dad 
raise his voice to my mom in 50 years. And when I got married, I remember thinking, I want to do that. I never want to raise my voice to Deb. Now, I'm loud, and when the kids were at home, they know I was loud. But I don't think, maybe one time I got a little irritated. But the kids weren't around. It was 2 a.m. in the morning. It's a long story. I won't go into it. But I've tried to do that. And I think I was able to transfer that to Zachary. And Lord willing, someday if Tyler's married, to him. Because I'd whoop them if they raise their voice to their spouses. I really would. Um, I used to tell the boys there's a big difference between a 200-pound man and a 200-pound boy. But he's like 270 now. <laughs> so, and I arm wrestled him. Didn't go well. <laughs> so the thing is, the steps of a good man, and I think back on that, and I think just the little thing of leaving our church that we attended, and it's still in existence, to come to this little tiny place on Dixie Highway, probably had 15, 20 people at it. When our family came, it practically doubled the size of the church. And what that little decision did and how it altered so many lives, it's amazing to me that they listened to that voice and said, let's go over to this church. And because of that, I met Debbie. Now, Debbie was the best looking girl in the church, hands down. I was not the best looking guy, I can tell you that for sure. How she picked me is a miracle. But during that time, I decided to go off to Bob Jones University. And when I got there, I hadn't picked a major, and I was talking to Dad about it. And I said, what do you think? And he said, well, look, why don't you take computers? Barely knew what they were, okay? What you see of computers today is not what was then. <laughs> and maybe accounting. I didn't even know what accounting was. But I loved it. It just fit my brain right. Do you know 18, 19, 20-year-olds are the dumbest people on the planet? <laughs> they really are. The time your kids need you the most... 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, we give them the most freedom. Your two-year-old need, doesn't need you as much as your older kids. And he directed and guided me. And the thing was, later on in life, when Tyler and Zach went off to college, Sam was pretty sad. She knew she wanted to be a teacher, and she went off the West Coast, became an English teacher, which is, I don't know, always funny. The, the South Korean teaches English, and it just, <laughs> I think it's funny. But I remember Zach, and I don't know if you'll remember this. One, we were sitting at Saginaw Medical, and he said, what do you think you want to take? Because he was looking at mechanical engineering, and he said, you know, I don't think I want to go that direction. I love computers. They had started a new program. I said, hey, I don't remember seeing that in the fall, in the spring. What do you think? He said, I love that. Guided him 30 years later like Wayne guided me. Tyler, the same thing. He ended up going into, and he was undecided. And he finally decided because I said, Tyler, you pick a major by the fall or I'll pick it, which you're still going to college. And he thought maybe I'll pick it instead of letting dad pick it. And who knows what he'd be today. So I can see God's hand all over our lives for all those years. Um, Zach met Hannah here. Little, they were just little kids. We've known that their family for their entire lives. I met Debbie here. We adopted Sam from South Korea. She, they meet Hannah. They have uh, our two grandkids. Um, Tyler, I don't know. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. I mean, he's sitting by a female tonight. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying anything, but... But decisions that were made 40 years ago directed something 40 years in the future. I wonder what we're directing in our lives with just those little voices. And as I, I thought about this, I'm going to go a little farther down the line. 
Zach and Ty go to college. They room with this kid from West Virginia, Peter Viviano, great friends. Came on vacation with us. Um, Debbie introduces him to Kelsey Voike. They get married and are married. They're sitting back here. Peter wants to move in this area, which he did, to come to this ministry, to be around Zach and Ty, Danny, got to know Danny. And if they have grandchildren, the Boykies will be grandparents because 40 some years ago, Wayne and Carol said, let's listen to the Lord go to that little church over on Dixie Highway that's got Amen. about that many people as these two rows. I just the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I hope you're listening to just those little things. Boy, something will hit your brain. We should go this direction. And, and, and I'll close with this. And I, a lot of folks know Pastor Hall is my friend and, and we were friends when he first got here, and I love him um, as a son. He's young enough to be our son. We've had a wonderful privilege at this church to have two great men, Amen. Pastor Ouellette, and then he handed this off to Pastor Howell. I, I don't think we would realize how blessed we truly are. And I got married on Dixie Highway in the, in the old building. And I thought, you know, someday Pastor Howell is going to stand here. I'll be down here. I'll be gone, and that's okay. But what a privilege. Don't, don't, don't take it for granted. Appreciate it. Support it. Give to it. Love it. Be an encouragement. You can come by here most days, and you can see Deb, and he's here. You can catch him. You can call him. You can talk to him. It's incredible. The spirit in our church reminds me of being a teenager at first. And you asked Jamie, Jeff, probably too, when we were on Dixie. That excitement is back in this church. And I, I couldn't be happier and happier than my grandkids and family at this church. So thank you. Thanks, Steve. Wayne, Brother Zach. In just a moment, we'll have the piano play, but I have a couple of thoughts for you as I listen to these men. I respect each one of them. Of course, I respect Brother Wayne. He's been around here a long time. He's proven to be a man of God. Um, remember one time years ago when uh, Brother Wayne, who runs a successful business, business is, when uh, one of our people from our shepherd's ministry had an accident in the bathroom, Brother Wayne was the one who grabbed the, the stuff and started to clean it up, willing to be a servant. That speaks more than just saying it. I've watched him make godly decisions, watch him give generously. I watch Brother Steve, of course, he's mentioned I've known him since I've been here. And watch Brother Steve raise his kids. I got here, I think, when Zach was, I think Zach, your sixth grade, or fifth or sixth grade, right in that time frame. And I watched Steve with his boys. I appreciate Brother Evans and his faithfulness and his love for God and love for this ministry. And then privilege of watching uh, brother, brother Zach, you know, I don't see Brother Zach as a young student or sixth grader now, he's a man, and not just because he's 6'5", 270, but because he's, he's a man who makes spiritual decisions and raising a spiritual family, and I appreciate their thoughts tonight being different, listening to God, and the small decisions. I don't think we realize, I don't think we truly comprehend what one two decisions, the difference they can make. The time, both good and bad, we decide to follow God, or the time we decide not to. Oh, it's no big deal. This time I'll just stay home. I'll just do it next time. Know that God in his wisdom and in his plan orders our steps. And as we follow him, as we seek his face, listen to him, be different for him, and do the best we can, God takes those little decisions, those little things that we think are almost meaningless. And we look back in hindsight and say, but God, you did something marvelous. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Lord, thank you for loving us. And Lord, thank you for these men and their testimony for you, Lord, and their challenge to us. Lord, help us to 
and be convicted by your word and your spirit. In just a moment, with the heads bowed and eyes closed, the piano will begin to play, and since we get to play, I wonder if some dads need to come and pray, if some moms need to come do business with God, if some kids need to say, you know what, I want to have a testimony like that one day. You don't have to wait to stand. If God's touched your heart, you can move now. I appreciate these men, but I appreciate the message, and I appreciate the God we serve. Lord, bless this invitation, but help us to respond the way we ought to. Thank you for these men and their testimony, their faithfulness. Lord, thank you.